Wait, now I see myself. There you are. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey everyone, today we're with Freya. You remember Freya from Chalet Nursery? Hi. Also a member of the greenhouse, you can find her there. And I just I just stopped by the Chalet Nursery to say hello. And Freya has um, this, she's raising butterflies. And I saw this and I said that we gotta make a video about this. So <laughs> we're gonna talk about how to raise butterflies. Yeah, that's really cool. Actually, I got this as a kit. It's a kit for kids. And you can send away for the caterpillars. And then they stay in a little hermetically sealed um, container yeah. and when they're in there there's food in there and you don't take them out you let them eat the food until one day they crawl up to the top and become little chrysalis out of the little container um, yeah they just do it they just eat out of the little container they stay in there until they turn into a chrysalis they'll climb to the top and spin a little web and then hang down and change and then after that you take off the lid peel it off and stick it into your container mm -hmm. or your your place where they're gonna hatch and then in about uh, seven days, they'll, they'll come out of there and you'll have beautiful little butterflies. You can only do this though um, with painted ladies because painted ladies are nationwide right. and um, they're not invasive to anywhere, so they're the best butterfly to raise. So they're native to the whole United States? They're native to the whole United States and they're not going to bother any ecosystem because they're oh. already a part of it. So these guys right here are the little painted ladies. And I'm part of the grilled cheese ecosystem myself. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You're already there. You already existed. Yeah. yeah. Um, the males tend to be territorial and they'll stay more towards the top. The females um, are are laid down lower. They butterflies like nectar to drink. They don't eat. They only drink. Huh. And um, they breathe through their abdomens and they taste with their feet. Wow. And they have a thousand eyes. So they're really, really different. <laughs> what they like to do is eat orange. So in your, if you decide to do this and raise them, you need nectar, which would be three tablespoons of sugar to a cup of water. Okay. And that will make nectar. And then um, maybe fruit, some kind of nectarish fruit like oranges. They will drink out of that for their lifetime. And then the females like to lay on host plants. Host plants may not be where they're getting their nectar from, but right. it's where the caterpillars will eat. Some host plants do have nectar too, like Asclepius or um, butterfly um, weed will have nectar too. What's an Asclepius? Is that a, is there a... It's butterfly weed. Oh, okay. Sorry. There's different varieties, and if you want if you want a butterfly garden, you have, a, have to have a lot of different varieties of Asclepius. It attracts most butterflies, and it's one that the monarchs absolutely need to lay their eggs. Yes, yeah. yeah. Now this one is tuberosa, which um, has orange flowers. And that's a beautiful plant for the perennial bed. And we saw a lot of these because they really work. And they're a host plant. In other words, they are not just giving the butterfly nectar, they're gonna provide um, a place for it to raise its young, the caterpillars. And you want that, you want, uh, you know, you don't, don't be upset if they eat a bit of your leaves because you're going to get a beautiful butterfly. Right, it's food for them. It's food. It's a good but plant. But it's not going to kill the plant either. It's not going to kill the plant at all and they've it worked out a relationship between the two of them. And it, it's important in the balance of things. So, balance is important. Yep. These painted ladies like asters. And they like anything in the aster family or they like anything in the mallow hollyhock family. So let me see if I can get big boy. And if he flies off, it's okay. I released some of these. There he goes. Oh, there he goes. Off into the wild. <laughs> but um, you can release these too, which is fun. Just don't release them in the winter time, especially if in your R zone where it's zone five and right, cold. Right. If you're living in the tropics, these guys can live year round in the tropics. But for here, they, they need to stay um, indoors. And what I'll do is I'll probably put these guys in our greenhouse here at the store so people can come and see live butterflies. So they could, you could essentially keep them over the winter if you just keep on feeding them this mixture. Well, not these guys. Because oh. butterflies only live t about two to four weeks. Oh. That's their whole life cycle. Wow. So it's very short. But I'll have new ones. I'll keep raising different ones. So there'll be se several generations. So they'll keep on reproducing. They can. Throughout the winter, if you keep them in your greenhouse. Yeah, and if you get the eggs, or if you send away for the caterpillars, right? Yeah, you can keep you can keep them going for the winter. Wow. Yeah. So it's a neat project. 
If you want to attract um, butterflies, um, native plants in your area are really the best because they act as the host plants. Something like butterfly bush, they generally only drink from the nectar. What you really want is your native plants. Okay. That's really important to our ecosystem because they really bring in a lot of the different insects that will help your soil and will help your plants and help the environment. Cool. So you can now put that in your... Uh... Yeah, I can now put that in my... Um... Eric and I just got a butter a monarch to lay an egg. And I'm going to put it in my little cage and hopefully it'll turn into a caterpillar. Cool. Very cool. <laughs> that was great. That was awesome. All right, so there you go. You can, I think this is a really good project for kids. Yeah, really fun. And, and me too, I love it. And you know, the cage can look really pretty. It doesn't have to be, you know, some science project, but you could have this in a nice part of your house. Yep. I really like this. It gets kids involved. It gets them away from the TV and the video games. Yep. And maybe they'll learn to be a scientist or something. Yeah. So. All right, come, come to the greenhouse. You can see Freya there. You have questions, you can ask her. Don't ask me, because you know, I don't know anything. <laughs> um, but we have Freya, so. Yep, I'll All right. be there. Make it a great day. We'll see you later. Bye.